All right, in this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the generative AI features of GitLab. So what GitLab did is they kind of wrapped all the generative AI capabilities, features under one umbrella, which they called as GitLab DO, kind of com uh, a competition to what GitHub is, is doing in the same space, you know, with Copilot and all. So in this video, uh, let's see as many as possible features. Um, you know, obviously, if you can, if you look into the documentation for GitLab DO, there are a bunch of generative AI capabilities that it says uh, that it embedded in, into its uh, tool. And some of them are in a very good maturity state, generally available experiments, on and so forth. As you can see, uh, you can see the availability as to you know which of these features are available in which tier of the license. Most of them are available in the ultimate tier, which is more, which is in most cases the enterprise license. I went ahead and created an ultimate license, ultimate tier license with GitLab uh, for 30 days, and I was able to explore some of these features. So let's see what, what we can cover within this video. I'm going to walk you through some of my favorites, code suggestions, chat, code explanations, and if time permits, I'll, I'll try to cover the other ones too. So for the, for the reference, you can see what are all the models that these capabilities are using behind the scenes. It's not just limited to Google. They're using uh, Claude, they're using OpenAI, uh, different types of uh, generative AI models for these features. So let's start with basic creation. Again, I created an ultimate uh, license, a trial license, and I created an arc for myself. And within that, I created a project. Uh, what this project is a very basic project with code suggestions. The only requirement that I think that GitLab had to put for using code suggestions is to having the repository in the Git, in GitLab and clone that into your local machine. So once that is done, what you need to do is go to your Visual Studio Code. In this case, I have Visual Studio Code as my IDE and then installed GitLab Workflow, which is an extension from GitLab. And once that's done, it will ask you to authenticate with your uh, GitLab account, just, just authenticate it. And once that's done, your GitLab is ready to use. And one thing you need to do before you start using code suggestions is to enable them in GitLab's console. So let's do that. I believe you have to do that from group level. So I'm going to go to group, hit general. Uh, let's see. This is where it is. Or maybe not here. Let me let me go back. Groups and this maybe here. Yes. So go to group and then within a group, hit settings. Go to general and permissions and group features. Expand that and make sure you have uh, third-party AI features enabled. At the same time, go to your avatar, you know, within, the, within your profile and select preferences. And within preferences, you will find an option called enable code suggestions. Once you enable, make sure you save the changes. If not, the code suggestions on your ID will not work. So let's go into my IDE, which is Visual Studio Code, and show you a test Python file to create a simple you know, code based on my comment. Okay, so I'm gonna do test logic py. Let's start writing. Let me write up something like identify user input email format and if it is true send information email saying account is created Okay, so I just typed my comment and then towards the end, I enter, I gave a simple space and you can see this 
line of code kind of got generated as a suggestion. Okay. So if you want, if you like this, I think I think I'm missing it. Okay. So the moment it gets generated, you you will not have a capability to select lines within these code generations, code suggestions. The only thing you could do is either accept or you know, in this case, I'm going to go accept this and which will basically write it up there. Okay, this file has, it, it's actually giving me some more suggestions. I don't know what it is. So let me read through it. This code has a file name, identify user input, created. Okay, let me just type, take this. I don't know what it does. Okay, I'm going to delete this. Also, I'm going to go back and delete this. Go here and hit space one more time. Okay, this looks a little better. I don't know what it does. I don't know if it really works, but I can see a regular expression, an import statement to import regular expression package, a simple email parameter, which takes email and then, you know, an F clause, which kind of checks the regular expression of an email. And if it's true, sends confirmation email. If it's false, says in, in, in value email, you know, not really what I was looking for, but you know, it's it's good from the context that I provided. So let let me go back and delete this and write something different. Okay, I'm gonna write write Python script to connect Google Cloud and Then create a virtual machine with Linux OS. That's a very long comment as you can see it gave me a detailed a logic as to how to connect a google cloud account i'm going to go ahead and accept this just to see what exactly it gave me so in this case it says google api client discovery and oauth client credentials service compute v1 and it says to put credentials in the credential sections and VM configuration, I know it gave a name to that we identified as zone, disk, service accounts required, so on and so forth. This is very impressive. I mean, at least I don't know if it really works, but if I'm, I'm pretty sure if we provide enough parameters as to what my Google account is, I know the, the, the authentication credentials, it will most likely will work. So this is good. That's, that's code suggestions. Another cool feature that I liked within uh, GitLab Bio is code explanation, but this is little weird as to how and where this explanation is being uh, showed for the user. So in, in my case, as you can see, this is my project and I'm going to select, uh, let me select this file and select, let's just say select these lines here and hit on this question mark, which gives me a little pop up towards the side, which is named as code explanation. So, and it gives me explanation as to what exactly these lines of code that I selected, uh, a very general exp explanation. It is not super informative or like very detailed in, in explaining it, but it does the job like import the necessary libraries, create a Google compute engine, pretty much what, whatever the, the number of lines that I selected in here. So for you to enable this again, I've shown you earlier that there is one option in the settings that you need to check and save the changes, which is, you know, enable third party AI services, go ahead and test and checking it and coming back to your code within your repository that this question mark, will not pop up if that is not enabled. So I'm going to go into go select again and see this. This is the question mark I'm talking about. All right, that's how you do code explanations within GitHub Dio. 
All right, so the next cool option uh, feature that I like within GitLab Dio is a code chat. So how do I check the code chat? So you know what, let me resize this. And within the left navigation pane, there is this option, there is this button called help. Click on it and you get a, a, a button, you know, an option called GitLab Dio chat, select on it, and then you'll get the chat uh, feature. Here. So in this, you can actually ask questions like, you know, how to create, you know, Terraform configuration file to create a GCS, GCS bucket. Let's see what it says. So it basically gave a resource blogs required for creating, uh, you know, a simple GCS bucket. As you can see, it's, it gave us uh, a provider block and then it gave us uh, a resource blog with GCS bucket. Let me ask us another much more complex question. How to create a virtual machine, how to get GCE instance with public instance with in a subnet where public IP is disabled. It's, it's, it started typing the configuration file to create a GC instance within a subnet with no public IP address. It first uh, created a, a subnet and then created a compute instance with some parameters. By default, I think it took Debian as my operating system image and then network interfaces. I, although, uh, although I did mention to disable the private IP, public IP, I do not see anything that's related to disabling it. Yep. So yeah, I mean, that's uh, GitLab's code chat. I don't know how effective it will be, but to some extent, someone who spends time in terms of identifying, hey, how do I get started? Hey, what, uh, you know, is there a syntax error within, you know, even, even from a template perspective, how do I get started? I think for those scenarios, these features are really helpful. I know there are other features like code review summary, code explanation, I know we tested code explanation, like merge request summary, discussion summary, pretty much summarizing goes in the collaboration. You need someone to, to test it out, which I couldn't do it in this demo, but hopefully I'll try to you know make another video just to test out the summary features of uh, GitLab Bio. Let me know your thoughts if you, if you like all these uh, features so far that I explained, but yeah. Put them in the comments if there are any specific gen ai feature that you want me to test out exclusively just to see how it works just because i have another 10 day trial license so i'm more than happy to test it out and share that understanding with you